Hey everyone, my name is Gunther and welcome back to Ottawa Zoo, where we build a new habitat for the raccoon of all species. And if you look really closely, you might see a little sneak peek of our next habitat as well. Now, before I kind of get into the rest of the build here, I do want to apologize. You may hear my voice uh, a little different today. I'm currently overcoming the uh, flu. I've lost my voice for a little bit. It's come back. Uh, it's been a rough time. Uh, while it is the new year, it's the first episode of the new year. It's uh, was not a fun new year's for me. I was sick the entire time, which is very unfortunate. I hope you guys all had the uh, fantastic new years. I'm really looking forward to 2024 and I really appreciate all the support you guys are showing me uh, when my channel, I think 2023 was a fantastic year. I hope it was fantastic for you guys. And I'm really excited to kind of talk a little bit today about what 2024 holds in store for uh, the channel, Gunter's Gaming. I think there's a lot to happen. Our community, our Discord community is continuing to grow and I'm really excited about that. And uh, I really hope that you uh, join me in on this journey as we kind of uh, see what's up next uh, in 2024. Now for the habitat itself, you see the same process. We utilize this for the grizzly bear uh, where I plan everything out. Now, this is super important. If there's one tip that you guys can take away from this episode, it's always plan your habitats. It really helps out. If you've known me, if you've been on this channel, I keep on saying this, I'm notorious for building habitats for either too big or too small. And I think uh, we're finally kind of getting the hang of it. Now, that being said, I do realize this habitat is actually still a little too small for two raccoons, which is unfortunate because I was hoping to kind of fit quite a few, but regardless, I'm really happy with how it kind of turned out. Now for this habitat inspiration, I actually didn't really have anything to kind of build off of. This is all kind of just free form and, and kind of enjoying what I'm building. And part of the reason why is because we have this large foliage island that we've created. It's the back half of our food core. It's part of the bear habitat. I didn't really want to have foliage everywhere. So it meant I had to kind of fill it in with whatever I could. And I felt that I wanted to keep it North American focused and the raccoon was like the perfect animal to put here. And there's some really cool things that I've done here that are kind of just ingenious at the time. And you're seeing some of the building kind of coming together and this is a perfect example of it. I'm not a big fan of these empty walls. I feel like they just, it doesn't look right and they always struggle. And there's a really quick and easy way to kind of create more full walls. And part of that is kind of creating like a backboard on it, utilizing some planks. And I think it's easy to kind of do this, anybody can do it, but I was kind of playing around with the coloring a little bit. And as I was kind of putting it together, I realized I wanted to kind of change some colors. And I ended up deciding to follow through with the idea of creating this backboard that's gonna match the color of the raccoon. It took me a while to get there. You can kind of see the colors didn't really match just yet. And then it's kind of starting to fall in. And I love the way that this entire idea looks more so because it carries through the raccoon theme throughout the rest of the habitat. It's very noticeable that's for a raccoon. And I really appreciate that. And I think as a zoo goer, if I were to come here, I'd be like, oh yeah, 100% this is for a raccoon. There's a few other Easter eggs as well that I kind of put in here uh, to kind of fill it in. But at the same time, it's still going to be a raccoon habitat and it's going to look like a raccoon habitat. That's the important thing. And this is where the color finally clicks. And I was like, oh my goodness, going to change that brown to a black. And now it's the raccoon colors I was talking about. So let's talk a little bit about what 2024 is going to look like for Gritters Gaming. And I think there's quite a bit for us to discuss. I'm not going to bore you for very long. I think that's the important thing. We're not here to talk about what's next. We're here to look at Planet Zoo and these amazing creations. And I really hope you like this creation, but I digress. Uh, I want to talk to you guys about what we're going to do next with the channel. And I'm going to start off with our Discord. And I'm really excited with the direction the Discord has come. We've seen a lot of growth and this Discord has become a whole new community in and of itself. So I'm really excited about that. And if you haven't joined it, if you're new to Planet Zoo, think about joining it. There's a great way for you to learn new tips and tricks on how to play Planet Zoo. There's tons of other YouTubers. There's tons of other tenure players there, people who know a lot about Planet Zoo. And I encourage you to kind of come and hang out and learn the tips and tricks of the trade. But it's not just about Planet Zoo anymore. There's a lot of other games out there. And I think I want to talk to you guys about what game I want to start playing next. And there's really two. And I kind of put a poll out a few weeks ago discussing about, you know, like what games you would like to see. And I'm thinking about playing uh, one type of game and it's still going to be a building game. I, I really love what I'm playing right now. Uh, and I'm a huge fan of dinosaurs. You know, like as a kid, I wanted to be an archaeologist and which kid didn't want to be an archaeologist uh, at one point in their life. And uh, I'm really excited to kind of maybe try my hand at building some really cool, crazy uh, new build within one of these games. So really it comes down to either prehistoric kingdom or Jurassic World Evolution. Both have their merits and both have their, their pros and their cons. And I think so I'm going to 
kind of check it out, but stay tuned and see what 2024 holds and maybe we'll see some new things. Now, if there's another game out there that's very similar to Planet Zoo that maybe I haven't talked about, maybe I don't know about it. So let me know in the comments below what games you would like to see played on the channel. Um, this is just to really kind of get an idea of what new games are out there. And I think that's really important because everybody wants to play new games. Now, kind of getting back to this whole build and whatnot, you've seen the foliage come down. It's very light on foliage, you know, it's very different, but I want to say, I think my foliage game's kind of improved, but I made a mistake. When I started building this entire habitat, I thought for some reason, and I don't know why, that I was going to kind of get away with a burrow shelter for the raccoon. It's not the case. So I quickly, very quickly had to create this uh, shelter, this like little hutch. And I'm really excited with how it turned out. I've never really used roof pieces the way we have. And these are like the roof trim pieces, a little bit easier to kind of work around with. And then really quickly, we kind of created this really cool looking hutch. And then everything was kind of completed. I was super happy. And then again, the idea of planning kind of rears its head, did not plan this very well. And we uh, forgot to put in a climbing structure for our raccoons. And funny story, because this all happened in franchise mode, I added our raccoons and then sure enough, a few minutes later, I saw a raccoon just kind of walking around by the, uh, the bear habitat. And that's when I knew maybe I kind of made a mistake. So that meant I had to kind of work together and build a really quick climbing structure. And I kind of stumbled across this really cool thought process. And it's really built with five pieces, which is really just the African logs, the climbing platforms, some rope, some rope piles, and then an African plank. And what you can do is you can create this really free form climbing structure. I'm really excited to see how this kind of turned up and how it kind of became something so much more realistic. It's probably my best climbing structure to date, which is not saying much because I haven't really built a whole lot of climbing structures, but I'm really excited how this kind of came together. And the really cool thing is it doesn't take a lot of skill to build it. It just takes some, you know, outside of the box thinking to kind of create something really cool. And one of the things I've always been really cautious about building was, you know, orangutan and monkey habitats. And the reason why is because the climbing structures have always been very daunting for me. I'm thinking that with this new technique, I'm being more comfortable and ready to kind of build on to those types of habitats. Not necessarily in Ottawa Zoo because it doesn't fit this kind of theme, but maybe in a future zoo. So I'm really excited about that. So with some final finishing touches on our climbing structure, it's really time to call this entire build complete, uh, but no episode is complete without a live tour. So stay tuned for a very short live tour of our newest build. And as promised, it is time for us to do a very quick live tour of our new raccoon habitat. And we'll start off with our education sign, which I'm not going to take full credit for. This is actually from the workshop that I've uh, modernized it and I've added some additional little flares for, for my zoo. So I'm going to leave a, a link in the description below uh, if you want to download this particular build. It's a little different, but I, I love the way it works and huge shout out to the content creator. Uh, so if you like this, uh, make sure you head on over and uh, drop a like on that, uh, on that uh, workshop item. Now you can kind of see off in the distance a, uh, a new build, something coming together. I'm really excited to show it off to you guys. And I'm really curious to see what you guys think it's going to be. Uh, so leave it in the comments below what you think is going to be the next animal that we add to Ottawa Zoo. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to take a look at our new and improved uh, raccoon habitat. Not really improved because this is actually going to be a first for us. But we have four raccoons, uh, two adults and two uh, babies. You can see uh, almost uh, pretty much all of them actually kind of just hanging around. And I'm really excited with how this build looks. It just kind of fits in the area super well. And I love the way the uh, the boards look on the back wall. Kind of line, it kind of works like a fence almost. Some raccoons kind of peeking over to take a look into this like yard uh, before our raccoon. So it's pretty cool. But I love the way this climbing structure works and it is fully navigatable. Uh, weirdly enough though, I had to uh, kind of adjust it just a tad to get them to kind of climb on it. And really what that means is I had to uh, kind of raise and lower it uh, just to get them to, to utilize it. Although I haven't seen them actually climb on it just yet. So I'm waiting for the day that I can do that. Hopefully we'll get a, a little uh, a little sneak peek of what that looks like. But as we kind of continue around, we can see that we have some additional education signs, some more signs from Lions Pack. Gotta love his uh, work. Uh, and of course, some uh, additional work, uh, additional uh, moss use and it kind of just flushes out the path this looks super natural and i'm really excited about that 
Now our staff only section has changed. Originally it was a uh, one by two box, but now it's a, a two by two. And uh, really it's just so I could fit in a uh, keeper hut because I wanted to have one a little bit closer to our habitat. So I've uh, modernized or uh, jerry rigged some of our foliage tables and stuff like that to work here. And as we kind of go in, we can get a better look without the glass in the way. This is our habitat. And I'm really excited with how it kind of turned around. I love the water work. I love all the foliage. It's not too heavy on the foliage per uh, really, but it's uh, it still works. Oh, a little bit of a clipping. Maybe I should go and fix that a little bit. Uh, nothing is perfect, of course. So uh, these uh, this is why these tours are always so important. So you can kind of clean up some of those small, smaller details anyway. Uh, but that's it. I love this way this hutch works out. It's not quite large enough for them, which is unfortunate, but I think it still works. And they're quite happy with their, uh, their habitat in general. So that's it. Uh, it's a very short and sweet tour today. Uh, so I do want to say thank you very much to all of our returning viewers and our subscribers. Uh, I really appreciate all of your support and, you know, just letting me know that I'm doing such a good job or I'm proving because this has really always been a uh, way to improve. And uh, to all of our new viewers, uh, welcome. And I hope that you think about subscribing. If not, that's totally cool. You're not required to. It does help me out though, but no pressure. I just want you to remember that. Otherwise, I just want to say Happy New Year's. Thank you so much. And as always, ciao for now, everybody.